I had a question this week that I thought I'll quickly answer now. The question was, why do I go on about how bad low fat is and how bad sugar is, but then I put you on a, the Bet Your Life diet, still talks about low fat milk, low fat yogurt, and so it's like I'm just saying it's all bad and then I'm lit, saying, but, but give it a try. So in the interest of being uh, balanced and being moderate, we've taken the approach that really, really intelligent people have been helping us decide how to eat for the last 50 years. It is almost impossible to believe that they were all wrong and that suddenly we have come into the enlightened present and now we all right and everything until now was wrong. So in an attempt not to be arrogant about that, so that I also don't have to be somebody who stands on TV one day and apologizes for I've got it all wrong, I've taught them wrong, I lied in my book, I'm ripping these pages out. I don't know, that's just something I've thought, I don't know if that's ever happened. But just so that it doesn't happen, I, I, I present the low fat diet, but what I want to encourage, when, especially when it comes to the dairy stuff, I don't want you to have lots of dairy. So the emphasis is still not on dairy. If you're doing fat, it's easy to have dairy for fat because your cream and your butt is a nice fat. It's very fatty, very little sugar. At the end of the day, a low fat diet, an, an easy way to say low fat is actually a vegetable diet. A vegetarian diet is a good example of a low fat diet because there's no fat. So what I'm actually really against is foods that are processed, that are made low fat, when in their natural form they don't come in that way. So that's kind of what we're heading for. Because the Better Life Diet focuses on proteins, carbs and fats and... Oh, actually I need to put that in anyway. And, and separating them... Um, The emphasis there is still on certain meals have carbohydrates and sugar, certain meals have proteins and fats. In that type of meal, where I'm trying to really separate them carefully, there it does make a bit more sense to have my low fat milk version. Because the fattiness of the milk interferes again with the digestion that I'm actually trying to accelerate. So it's more of a trick of the way that your stomach's working than it really is a weight loss technique. So those of you who've tried the Better Life thing, one of my very first comments normally on Better Life is that it helps for my heartburn because your food just doesn't spend so long in your stomach anymore. It quickly digests and because it's just one type of food, it digests quickly, passes through quickly. So that's the deal with the low fat and the high fat. If you want to have high fat milks, that's fine, or high fat yogurts or double cream yogurts, but then they must be considered fats or proteins. So with those meals, you have the fats and proteins. And if you're still gonna try, if you still really feel like you need your rice and you need your potatoes and you need your millies, if, you, if your head's not ready to change yet, because that's also why I've left it there, some of us like to change slower than others. And I don't think we all have to change. For those people, that's still a, a good option. Many, many people have lost weight on way, way less and weight watches over the years. Many, hundreds of thousands of people. So we don't, I don't want to be the next new breath of fresh air that just makes like that they were junk. They weren't junk, they do work, but they take a lot of discipline. So although they have hundreds of thousands of successes, they have hundreds of millions of failures. So we forget about the failures because they're hard diets. They're hard to maintain, they're hard to stay on, and you do regain a lot of that weight because most people tend to keep going back more and more carbs at the end of the day. Okay, so any other questions that you can think of while we just have a question minute or two? Yes? Can you change in the middle? Yeah. Not you can change? No. So yes, no. No, yes. First in the right order. Yes, you can change, not now. So. You have to stick to banting four to six weeks before you decide it's working or not working. If you hate yourself, your life, and your dog, you can change. No, your husband's kind of always neutral like that. <laughs> I don't think that's a good reason to change a diet. But if you, you know, your, your, your brain will absolutely fight the convention of what you're doing. It feels wrong, it tastes wrong, you miss things, you miss your fruit, you miss your bread. That's part of your addiction throwing itself at your mind, trying to get you back to the old way. So what we think is the old way, bread, millies, rice, uh, potatoes, sweet potatoes, that's only been the way for 60, 70 years. We didn't used to eat like that. We used to have those things from time to time. We've made it, it's our way, 
but it's not necessarily the way, and you need to try it properly before you give up. If it means you're eating less food, well done. That's probably the idea. At the end of the day, the banting when it's working, it's not about eating lots and lots of fat, it's about eating foods that satisfy you, eating until you're not hungry anymore, eating less often, eating with bigger gaps in between. Push through that thing in your brain. Because you divide it in a group that's doing the whole thing, we'll, I'll tell you how that's going to work in a few weeks' time. But your group stuck on that thing, so give it a go. Don't give up. Don't give up on what you're doing. They all work. Banting is not the only diet for the rest of your life. Definitely not. Paleo is not the only diet that works. Mediterranean is not the only. Every single one of you has something special and unique that's going to work for you, but you're going to have to find it. But most of us struggle because we get stuck at that first hard place. And then we just revert back to what we used to do. So even if you just use banting to change your thinking, then that's fine. Then I think it's achieved its purpose. Okay. Any other question? How is it going? Yes. Um, what does um, the diet have to uh, Does it have anything to do with your blood type? Or no, our diet doesn't. So you do get a, a diet called the blood, uh, the blood type diet, which is about 30 years old now. And what we've done with the blood type diet, we've, act, we've gotten clever since, since he did that and developed that diet based on a theory based also really on some paleo principles because his theory of the blood type diet is that when we first existed, we were herbivores. Then later we started eating animals. We became omnivores and our blood groups actually changed. So we were all type A in the beginning. Then later came a type B. Eventually we all end up type O, which is the most common type of blood. And most of us in this room are O negative. Uh, sorry, O positive. So it's most common by far, which is an omnivore diet. So people that can eat everything. So his book's kind of based loosely on that. We've become a little bit cleverer now so we can actually do DNA tests. So I can tell you, based on your DNA, do you have enzymes that digest this better than that? Uh, carbs better than fats, fats better than proteins. I can actually break it down. Do you break down short chain fatty acids, long chain fatty acids, medium chains? So I can get very specific. I can do a test that can tell you if you can eat uh, beef but not lamb. I can tell you if you, if you can eat almonds but not macadamias. You can eat hake but not um, salmon. So these things are available. So we've gotten a lot cleverer since that time. His diet is great unless it tells you you're A and you can't have meat and you don't care. Then, then what? So he, he doesn't have any wiggle room. And uh, most people actually just find they don't. If you are the type O, then you're great. Then you just eat less of everything. And he chose a sort of a, a slightly lower carb diet, very Mediterranean, when you look at his O diet. That's what he actually based it on, the Mediterranean diet. So it has merit. I think at the end of the day, like most things, if you just stick to something for long enough, it will probably work on some level because it does take away junk. It does take away sugar. It does take away processed. But in his, he doesn't take away carbs. Yes. But there's still carbs in there. Yes, there's still carbs. So the idea of banting is not no carbs. The idea of banting is less than 10% of your total food intake is carbs. Banting, uh, so your, your double thick yogurt or your uh, Greek yogurt, double creams, is and fine. It's not, uh, and it's not, not uh, what's this? It's not Bulgarian yogurt. So Bulgarian yogurt is still considered a low-fat yogurt, but I like the Bulgarian because of the organism in the yogurt. So it's still very good for your gut. So like Bulgarian, and if you're doing better life, you can still Bulgarian. You can mix Bulgarian with your Greek. Can You can. So it's going to add a bit of sugar. So it's definitely a little bit more sugar in Bulgarian than in your double thick. Oh. But oh, well, let's correct that. There's not more sugar. There's less fat. So relatively speaking, there's oh, more right. sugar. Oh, okay. But I like the Bulgarian. Bulgarian is good for your gut. Because I actually bought it too. And then I first ate Bulgarian. And then, okay, it must be not <laughs> You know, still just don't eat too much yogurt. You must be careful because every yogurt still got too much sugar in it. The best form of dairy is still cream. Because there your ratio, you've got one gram of sugar to every 37 grams of fat. That's a very big difference. Whereas your yogurts are talking about five grams of sugar and seven or eight grams of fat. So there's not as much fat in it as you think. I don't know, like, you know, 
lunch don't push on it, eat lunch. It's fine if it sustains you. So I feel good when I have a little bit of it and I'm not hungry for five hours. That's still your, your best rule. Do I feel good on this, good on this? Do I have tired or dizzy spells on it? Uh, am I hungry? Do I overeat when I get home because I'm starving now? Bad. Okay, then I'm going to one more question. On the paleo, you have to eat three times. You have to eat two meals. Preferably. Uh, but on... Banting. Uh, on the banting. Yeah. Do you still have to do that? Because I tried to. No, you don't have to. So we generally, so we invented food meal times. Breakfast, lunch, and supper was invented, in fact, by the Romans. So did you think you do it because it makes sense to you, but it really doesn't. It was something that was decided so they could divide the day into equal portions. And before that, there was no such thing. Before you used to eat when you were hungry, you used to, when it was light, you had your, your morning meal, when it was getting dark, you had your evening meal. Somewhere in the day, maybe you ate, maybe you didn't eat. Depends what you were doing. So I don't think the men who went out for a hunt stopped for lunch and sandwiches. <laughs> just maybe kill a little rabbit just for lunch till we get the bucks for the supper. Uh, we've made these meals up. The biggest reason most of us eat breakfast and lunch is because we're not sure how long it's going to be before we can eat again. So we're not always hungry at that meal time, but we worry that we won't make it to supper. You've heard yourself say this? So you might eat. If you can, the best kind of food is something you can carry in your pocket or keep in a drawer or put in your car so that you can really wait until you actually are hungry and then eat. That's the ideal, but it's obviously not easy. Fine. If you can do it. So I like nuts and biltong for that. If you really just find, you know, the daytime, your lunch is very vesselfalak. It's all over the place. You're never sure when it's going to come. Then you keep that food something accessible, something in a tin. Sardines is a nice little snack. Uh, very nice oily fish if you're banting. What is vegetable oil? Uh, don't you get sardines in brine as well? Mm -hmm. No, that tastes awful. <laughs> <laughs> you're looking, this is a different course you're attending. Okay, I'll give you their number. Yes. Um, with the BMI, they always tell you that you can judge whether you're at weight or obese. Yes, or yes. Yes. But doesn't that take into consideration also your, your bone structure? So bone so structures very, 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 very little. So a lot of people say that I have a heavy bone structure. It's not actually true. Your bone matter differs minutely. Muscle does differ. So if you say I'm fit and he's not fit, that makes a big difference. The truth is if you are more than 35 BMI, it doesn't matter how much muscle you've got, you, you're overweight. If you are really getting down to BMI of 20, I'm going to start looking at muscle mass. That's going to become a differentiator. It's going to change your eat. So BMI doesn't work for really short. It doesn't work for really tall. It doesn't work for really fit. So it's not the perfect measure. It's a thumb suck. It's based on a ratio. It's just easy. The best, best way to compare and to even know if you're improving is to do what we call a waist to hip ratio. That's how you know. Your belt says more about how you're doing than your scale. Okay. So keep pulling it tight. <laughs> Last question. Yes, who's got the question? Yes. I can't eat early morning. Yes. I only eat here about 10, 11, even 12 o'clock. Okay, it's fine. I can live with that if you can. Yes. So then I only eat here tonight. Okay, here's the trick with that one. So when people tell me I don't feel like breakfast, a lot of us get up early, don't feel like anything. I don't mind you doing it, but the, the only rule then no rules, in a world of no rules, if I could choose just one suggestion, is then don't eat after 7 o'clock at night. So just make sure that you're not hungry in the morning because you're eating so late at night. So if that's fine, eat, then you're fine. You, come home oh. Tuesdays, uh, at, uh, after you have to eat before this, otherwise you're not allowed to eat. <laughs> no, are you crazy? Do you guys go home and eat now? <laughs> we don't. I have to wait till breakfast now. Okay. So obviously it doesn't always work. So where as far as possible you eat early, close to seven. You know what? You just try want you try want you want to try to eat at least three hours before bedtime and preferably five. But what you all know is that the longer the gap between eating and bedtime, the worse you are. So keep it short. Find that magic little place. Eat at seven, go to bed at ten. Good. Try and sleep eight hours. Get up. Feel nice. Eat if you want to. Don't if you don't. I very often. Uh, we'll just have a coffee in the morning, but I'll put coconut oil and I'll put cream in it. So I'll do that. A coffee, I haven't taught you about a bulletproof coffee yet. 
Um, okay, it's not tonight's lecture, but we, I, I think we do talk about it later. So if you are banting or you're into fats or paleos, this is fine too. You make a normal coffee. Now, I don't have ca uh, a caffeine, and I've taken your caffeine away, but I have caffeine in the morning because caffeine does stimulate your adrenal gland. So there's, it's fine if you, as long as you don't die for your coffee. If you feel like I can't move until I've had my coffee, that's wrong. Problem. So I'll have caffeinated filter coffee with coconut oil, a spoonful of coconut oil, a blob of butter, and about 20 mils of cream. That's what you say today, people. That's what you're saying. And you don't feel hungry for the rest of the day. Try it. Surprisingly better than you think. Because you're expecting to drink something like, you know, Tropic uh, Suntan Lotion. But it actually, it actually sits quite well. It's really not an unpleasant taste. Give it a try. I'll put it on Facebook. You, oh, no, look, there's lots of detox. That's actually something else I'll put on Facebook. A lot of people like to wake up with a sort of a detox shake. So you can put things like cane pepper, apple cider vinegar, cinnamon, um, nutmeg. You can, there's lots of little things you can make, little drinks in the morning. Grapefruit juice, awesome. Olive oil, just gets your liver going, gets your bile flowing, clears your gallbladder. Very, very good to get the morning started. Okay. We'll chat about this. This is all coming up. But it kind of gets weird. If it's not getting weird, you're doing something wrong. 